Good morning, everybody. Hi. Just finishing setting up here. And we'll get started in a couple minutes. Hope everybody had a nice weekend. You know, happy Mother's Day to all those mommies out there. Oh, I'm really thankful for Live Art Wednesdays because it helps me remember what day of the week it is. So there's that. Do, do, do. Here we go. Today's crafts are featuring um, some old magazine pages, so I'm excited to share that with you. If you're like me and have been cleaning out and readjusting and figuring out where things go around the house um, now that we're in it all the time, it's definitely something that I uh, am working on. So cleaning out my old magazines. We'll talk about that in a little bit here. Again, I'm just gonna give it a minute or two for people to hop on. Make sure I'm live here on my computer. Do, do, do. Okay, there we go, great. Again, at any point, if you have a comment, a question, a suggestion as we're going here today, just leave me something below, like write a little message, give me a thumbs up or a heart or, I don't know, a frowny face if that's how you're feeling. That's cool, you know, we all have those days. Um, again, my name is Trisha Roberts. I'm here on behalf of the Plymouth Art Center to provide uh, you with live art Wednesdays. Every Wednesday at 10, I'm coming on with some different projects and, um, kind of doing a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do those. These are multi-level projects, um, so you can do them with small children, you can do them as an adult, you know, and everywhere in between. I try to give uh, different levels to um, each of the projects to help you kind of decide like what will work best for you and your family. So uh, before we get started today, thanks. <laughs> My husband's watching and sending me hearts. Appreciate that, Tom. Um, before we get started today, um, I just wanna give you a couple uh, details of what's coming up at the PAC. We're starting to get things moving again. You know, we've been in this whole like cancellation situation and um, we're excited to actually be putting things on the calendar. So June 3rd, we have a virtual wreath class with Alexis Harden. She is putting together kits and then we have, we'll either deliver them to you if you're in Sheboygan County, if that's what you prefer, or we'll have a pickup time at the PAC on June 2nd. So that'll be a virtual class. She'll come on the Zoom meeting, it'll be live with you. She'll talk you through using everything in your kit on how to make an 18 inch grapevine wreath. They're beautiful and she's awesome. So if that's something that interests you, sign up, okay? And we'll get you started. Uh, Mary Starnicki is back with her summer art camps. We have grades one through four in the mornings. We have grades five through eight in the afternoons. There's a whole bunch of different weeks. Those are up on our Facebook page. There's like painting week and then there are themed weeks like zoo week or pirate week or wizard week. So if you don't know Mary, you should follow her. Um, again, she has daily doodles. She's posting stuff all the time. It's really creative and she's probably one of the most creative people that I know. So follow her. Um, I'll also be bringing back my Mastering Mill Street Choreography Camp this summer. Again, if we can't do these summer camps in person, we will have um, options to do them virtual, okay? So if you're nervous about signing up, our classes will run no matter what. It'll just be whether or not we're in person or kind of like this virtually, okay? Um, the other thing that I'm working on right now for putting together for the PAC are uh, art kits that you would purchase and then take home. So if that's something that you might be interested in, um, let me know if you have any, some ideas. We're thinking about doing like a standard and a deluxe kit, you know what I mean? Um, and I might also do themed kits like this is a painting kit, this is a sculpture kit, etc. Um, because I know like I'm digging through all my old supplies trying to find things and it's like, man, I have one million crayons, I have zero sets of watercolor paints, you know, and it's hard just to like go out and buy one thing. So um, stay tuned for more detail about that. Okay, those are my announcements. Let's get started this morning with my double guns. Um, we're going to start off with butterfly garland. So again, if you're cleaning out like I am, sort of, let's be real though, I'm like, sort of motivated but not super motivated. I found one million food magazines because I'm obsessed with these and I really thought I was going to be America's Next Great Chef like home cook one day um, but I was not. Anyway I'm trying but 
Um, these are great. So if you're looking for a magazine, let's say you already cleared out all your magazines and you need to go pick one up when you're grocery shopping, um, I highly suggest the food magazine. Not only do they have yummy, pretty easy sometimes recipes, but like, again, look at the colors. So for our projects today, we're trying to find like really colorful pages, okay? So again, this is not supposed to be an ad for Food Magazine, but I just really like their colors. This one's missing a bunch of pages because I pulled out. Like look, this hamburger ad, super orange and fun, America, okay? So um, I would say the first thing you wanna do for either one of these projects is to go through your magazines and rip out colors that you're attracted to. Um, you'll see for some of my examples, I found this really neat like floral page. I think they were talking about edible flowers. So that you'll see, um, I have, yeah, you can see here, edible flowers. So I cut a bunch out of that one already. I found this really cool lime green. So this will make a cool, um, like either bead or butterfly. On the back though too, they've got different colors. So this would be kind of fun. At any point too, it's paper, so you could technically paint it. So let's say you only have like newspaper around. Do it a newspaper. If you like the look, keep it. If you'd rather paint it, at the end you can totally paint it, okay? So step one for either project is going through, I think, and pre-ripping out a bunch of those magazine pages. So for butterflies this morning, you're going to want a smaller square and a larger square for each butterfly that you're making. So. Um, this is a three inch square and this is a two and a quarter inch square. That is the size of this little baby butterfly right here. Okay. I, for teaching purposes, I'm going to use a bigger square. So this is a four inch square and then this is a three and a quarter inch square. So when I'm teaching you how to do this, I'm going to use one that's a little bit larger because I think it'll be easier to see. And anytime if you can't see something or you need me to stop and redo it too, again, just give me a comment and then I will go back and adjust. Okay, so our little butterflies here. You can see we've got two parts, okay? We've got the top square and then the bottom square, and then I tied it together in the middle. And then once you've made a bunch of these, we'll string them together, and that'll like be how you make the garland. Or you can use it for a bunch of different things. We'll talk about that. Okay, <clears throat> so we have our two squares. Let's start with the large square because there's not much that has to happen with this one. You want the color that you'd like on the outside well, it's three-dimensional, so you're gonna see both sides, right? But anyways, make sure you fold the color that you'd like on the outside um, to the outside. So you're gonna fold like the back side, if you will, in towards the middle. You're going to take two corners together. What I like to do is try to match up as best as I can one side. This is a great way to um, also check to see how square your piece of paper is if you cut it. Some people are really good at measuring. I'm okay. Sorry, dad, <laughs> I'm okay at measuring. But this one actually looks pretty good, okay? So you're going to fold it in the middle first and you want a really strong center crease. This is kind of like um, another form, I guess, of origami. We did our puppets, right? We did our little finger puppets last week. That was like more of an origami situation. Um, this too, you want a nice strong fold in the center. Then what we're going to do is we're gonna fold one side of the wing at a time. So I'm going to just swish my comments away here. There you go, and you can see in front of me. Okay, so I'm gonna take down one of the flaps and I wanna make a really small crease. Okay, I'm gonna do it and then I'll show you how I did it. But we wanna make it even all the way across. Okay, and what I mean by small crease, <clears throat> You can see, let me see if I can show this. Okay, so here's the side. And then when I creased it, come on little guy, there we go. You can see that there's like just this little part that's it's kind of hard to see, okay? So I, I gave it like maybe a centimeter, okay? I have space between the middle fold and my next fold. And then we're gonna do this accordion style, okay? So I folded it once and I'm gonna fold it back and I'm gonna match my next crease with that original middle crease or what would be like the bottom of the triangle if I'm looking at it. And again, really strong creases here. Okay, so you can see that I have two, I have three creases. And again, accordion style. So I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna match the top crease 
when I fold it, the tip of the triangle down, right? If you want to think about it that way, it's kind of hard to describe. And then when I do my tip, so my tip down, I'm going to match that top crease. Okay. And then when I fold my tip back up, I'm going to match the bottom crease. Now I'm choosing to do really small creases um, or really small space because I think it makes the wings look better like this one I only did like four or five creases and it looks good but I'm trying to see like what more creases like how that changed the changes the patterns of the wings and again this is easier to get more creases in if you have a bigger square to start with so I'm going to keep folding here I think you guys get the accordion fold idea until I cannot fold anymore And if you are a fast folder, please feel free to go ahead. Okay, so then here I have one side is accordion folded, okay? You're gonna go ahead and do the other side next. And again, when you do that first fold, that tip down towards the ground, you wanna match that middle crease or the top crease that you have, okay? So you wanna keep it on this little tiny same width. That's what I'm looking for. And then again, when the tip comes up, I'm gonna match the bottom crease. If that doesn't make sense, let me know and I can try to explain it in a different way. Here we go, creasing. I'm finding this very therapeutic this morning. Sometimes it's nice just to um, work with your hands on something like creasing, which isn't mentally too challenging and it's a nice little break from you know, other things that I think about all day. <laughs> Potty training. Okay, and back up. There we go. So at this point, you have this nice little accordion. Okay, don't pull it apart. Keep it folded together. And then in the middle where the tips, the little baby tips are folded, that's where you're going to fold it in half. Okay, and give it a nice little fold right there. Now these um, can be the top or the bottom of your wing. You can decide how you put together your butterfly, but you can see um, I like it a lot with the, all those folds, okay? And again, that red um, background is fun. Even though it had words on it and things, you can't really see the words or the picture. Um, what really comes through is the color. So think about that too when you're working on your butterflies and when you're picking pages to use. Okay, for the smaller one, I'm gonna start off by rounding the corners because it helps give the butterfly a different look. So I'm gonna round the corners a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna fold it corner, well, old corner to corner. It might be easier now that I'm doing this to fold it first and then round the edges. But as long as you get it pretty close to a middle crease. You're there and if you wanted to you could even out you know what i mean where things go okay and then again we're going to do the same thing that we did with the big one the accordion fold so i'm going to start with one side rounded point down that wasn't even so i'm going to adjust it there we go quick accordion fold mm -hmm. okay there we go, one side's done. I'm gonna do the other side. So you can decide um, when you're folding, maybe, how many butterflies you wanna make for your garland. I will have two completed after this, so I'll show you how we can um, string them together after we assemble. The biggest thing, it doesn't quite matter how many folds you do, just as long as they're even on both sides, okay? So now you see here, I'm gonna fold it in the middle after I do my accordion folds on both sides. Give it a nice crease, okay? And then I have a bottom set. So I'm gonna put, so I have it folded and folded. I'm gonna put those folds together like this, making sure that I have what I want on one side facing out, right? And the other side. So like a front and a back, if you will, right? You can kind of look together to see, like, do I want it like that? Do I like the red and blue together? I'm gonna put red and blue together. The next thing you want to do is take, with this one, you can see I used yarn, okay, because I had that color and that I thought looked really pretty. I'm also going to pull out um, some embroidery thread that I have, 
I was a huge fan of making friendship bracelets when I was a kid. Uh, maybe some of you were too. And so I have like a huge bag of this <laughs> and I love still making friendship bracelets. It's really fun. Okay, so I'm gonna take the two middles that I smushed and folded together. I'm going to wrap the thread around it a couple times to give it a nice solid connection, okay? And then at the top of my butterfly, I'm going to tie a double knot or more, depending on the look that you're going for. And this is to A, hold my butterfly together, and B, kind of give it its little head, if you will, um, because when we cut the strings, it'll look like they have a little antenna. And that'll be to complete our butterfly. So one knot, two knots, there we go. And then I'm going to cut off the tops here. There we go. Kind of stick those up a little bit. Then I'm going to fan out my wings, okay? And you can kind of um, uncrinkle I push a few of them in and out so you can start seeing how I started fanning out this side. I sort of straightened some of the creases towards the middle to help the butterfly look a little fuller. Okay, look at that, how pretty, huh? And we have our little antenna in the middle. Now maybe I should have picked a different one versus red because it blends in so much with the wings on the top, um, but also I like it because it kind of matches. Okay, so now we have two butterflies. They're different sizes. What you wanna do if you're gonna create a garland, for example, to hang up maybe over a door or around a picture or something like that to decorate for spring, um, you want to grab, I would suggest a thinner, if you have a thinner yarn, if you have string, if you want it to be invisible, maybe um, fishing lure or something like that, if you have it. I'm not a fisherman, so I mean, my dad would have it, I would call it. Um, and you would want to get a nice long, however long you'd like your garland to be. That's the size that you want to cut out of your string. Okay, so I'm just going to guess here for now. If you want to measure, go ahead and measure. Um, again, I would suggest probably like five. I think odds are fun because you have one in the middle and then you can do more on the outside. So like three or five or another odd number that you want to pick. Um, and then this would be a really good time to grab like a like a needle, uh, crochet needle, for example, to thread, right? It might be hard to get your thread underneath um, after you've tied it kind of tight, but I'm able to do that with my guys today. So here you go. So I threaded underneath, and again, then you can scoot it towards the back. Now you can choose, because it's tight, um, you don't necessarily need to tie it on. You can kind of leave it be because it'll stay on the string, if you will, because of the type of string I'm using. But if you want it in a very specific spot, then I would tie it even with one knot just to keep it there. Okay, so I have one strung on. Again, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna maybe go through the bottom because it's easier to get underneath. And then I'm gonna pull it up so it's behind the butterfly or towards the back of the butterfly. Now with my yarn, this one is getting a little, this one's a little bit harder to do, but I'll try here. There we go. Now, if you're a person that only has like white paper, you could do this with printer paper if you wanted to or construction paper. Um, I just liked the idea of recycling uh, magazines or newspaper. But again, you could paint them. I would just, um, I would paint them after you tie the yarn in the middle, but before you string it, because you don't want to paint the string. And then let them dry a little bit before you would hang them. Okay, so now you can see here that my little butterflies are strung together. Okay. And again, you can decide if you want to tie it on, you know what I mean? Um, so they uh, look like they're, you could adjust it like this. You know what I mean? So they look like they're flying. So you could keep it either loose so you can adjust them, you could tie them on so they're in place, things like that. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. Woo, my words today. Alrighty, I'm gonna leave these up here. We'll go back to those maybe a little bit later. Our next project are um, magazine beads. Woohoo! Okay, this I had a really fun time with this morning. 
Um, I'll show you the few that I've made. They're already dry, um, so they dry pretty quickly. Here is one. Here's another. Okay, they're fun colors. Here's a blue one, and I don't know if you can see in this one. Let me put something behind it. Okay, you can kind of see that there's a dip in the middle. So I'm gonna show you how to make a traditional like triangular cut bead, and then we'll talk about some of the other shapes that you can use or some of the other techniques for rolling beads if you wanna get fancier. Okay, um, just to take a pause back. These are also really cute as like gift wrapping um, attachments. So let's say it's somebody's birthday or um, for another holiday coming up, I don't know where you wanna just send someone some love to make a little butterfly like this and attach it to a package is really cute. Um, or you could maybe make some sort of mobile that moves in the wind or something like that. So these can really be used for a lot of different things. I would say the folding might be hard for littles, um, but they can really help you with stringing them on or deciding where they go. So this is probably a bit, a bit of an older kid activity. Um, but they could help you pick colors, color recognition. You could do some of different colors. They could help you make a pattern. You could do a rainbow of butterflies, things like that. You know, have fun with it. Try to include them too. Okay, that's all I'll say about the butterflies. Love them. They're cute. They're easy and fun. Okay, up next, beads. Beads. Is everybody doing okay? All right, no questions, no comments. We're going to keep moving here today. With our beads, you're going to want your glue your scissors, okay, um, a straw or something like a straw, maybe a pencil or some people say a toothpick, but those I think would be hard to string if you're going to make like a necklace or a bracelet. Um, but if you're going to use it to like craft something else out of, um, I've seen people like put together frames or like cool circular, maybe they're what are those called? Coasters, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of different ways that you can use these beads to like craft or make something different. Um, and that just depends on like how big the hole is. So I'm using this straw as my base. You can see the hole is a nice size for stringing um, either embroidery thread with or a yarn I could get through here too. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you guys today. Okay. These little ones that I made here are using the traditional triangle method. So I'm gonna show you that first. What you're gonna to wanna to do again is cut out some triangles of paper from your um, magazines. So I'm gonna use this last little chunk of flowers that I have. I'm gonna cut out a strip. You always wanna make sure that you have a decent sized base and that'll be like, that'll end up being the width of your bead. And then as I say a traditional triangle, you're gonna to wanna to cut this strip into a long triangle. So I'm gonna use this as my bottom, okay? And then I'm really gonna slowly cut it to a point at the top. Now, when you're doing this, you wanna be careful because you can use like the scrap that I just got off. You can use this as another bead. You could use it as an accent to a bead and we'll talk about that in a minute, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, cut it to a point. And then again, I have a little extra triangle. So I'm gonna put that to the side here. Okay, once you have your strip cut to a point, you're gonna again wanna decide what side you want to have facing out. Oh, this one would be cute because it's got a little pink here, but also the flowers. Ooh, I have a bunch of florals that I did, so I'm gonna use it so the pink is on the outside. So whatever side you want inside or not to be seen, you're gonna put that towards the straw the part that you do want to be seen is going to be outside of the straw, okay? <clears throat> the first part of this rolling is tricky. So again, if you're doing this with the younger kids, I would suggest getting the bead started and then having them finish it, for example, or um, helping you once the beads are made. You could pre-make some beads and then have them help you string it. So I don't know if you guys can see, um, but I'm going to wrap this around my straw before I put any glue on, okay? And I'm going to hold it there tight. Then I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna make a nice little base. So I'm gonna do a line of glue really close. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. I just did a line of glue like right here. And I'm gonna wrap, wrap that around. This is the hardest part is to get it started. 
And the easiest shape of like paper to use is the triangle to get it started. I just wanna point that out too. So you might want to, before you get crazy with the shapes, try a few triangle beads first to get started and then go from there. The next thing I'm gonna do is just do one long line of glue, okay? You could do it all the way down if you wanted to. I like to do it like in chunks. So I did some glue. I'm going to keep rolling it tight. Okay, and I put my glue right down the middle of my page. And you'll notice as you're rolling that it squishes out, you want that, okay? It's gonna hold the whole bead together. And I'm doing this nice and slow so you guys can kind of see the process. As you get more comfortable with it, you can um, probably do it much faster. And again, I'm not happy with how tight it is, so I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna readjust it. That's the, the magazine is a little bit of a thicker paper, so it's kind of easier to do that. It might, if you try to do that with newspaper, because of how thin it is, it might rip. Okay, so I'm gonna um, add my more glue, add my more glue, woo, add more glue all the way down to the point. I'm gonna roll this together. Okay, now with this style of bead, oh, I'm rolling it not center, but you can kind of see here. You'll, it'll be thinner on the outsides and then have a little bit of a bump in the middle. Okay. Look at how pretty and pink that is. So you can kind of see it's, it's thinner on the outsides and then it has a little hump in the middle. Okay, and that's my simple bead. I'm gonna pull it off. Because we didn't glue it to the straw, it's easy to slide off. If you do get some glue in the straw, as long as you slide it off as soon as you roll it, it will like dry to the straw, so you should be good. Okay, and then I'm gonna add that to my plate. You don't want it to touch another one because it might glue itself to it. So you wanna keep them, you know, spread out. I'm gonna treat my, keep my dry guys over here. Okay, and my wets over here. So that's a simple triangular cut bead. Now, um, if you'd like something a little bit more um, equal, right, or even, um, that's kind of like this guy. I just cut a straight up rectangle with the orange. I'm going to use that again to start. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this one a little bit faster here. My base glue right along the edge and get a nice tight start. And then I would roll it again if, if you're working with kids, I would like roll it once or twice so you know it has a really strong base. And then I'm gonna just go all the way down the middle with my glue. Again, if it squishes out, it's all it's gonna do is hold the bead together better. Okay. and then I'm gonna roll this tight. Knowing that what other co whatever color is at the end is what color is gonna be most apparent on my bead if I'm doing a rectangular cut. Okay, so there you go. I have a little extra at the, at the end. I'm gonna smear that on top, try to glue it down. My end is popping up here, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more glue to really make sure that it is attached and not popping up. There we go. And you might want to hold it there for a second or two. Your fingers might get gluey. Now I said paintbrush too, because if you're working with littles, they might want to paint the glue on using a paintbrush. So you could squeeze some glue out, paint it on. Okay, and then um, I see that this is sticking, so I'm gonna pull that off. Oop. Nice and gentle. Okay, and this is an even kind of round bead. So it's fun to make different shapes, different sizes, different colors of beads, because when you string them together, you can do different patterns, you can do different color schemes um, to make like a cool necklace. You could have something more, you know, colorful or a different size in the middle and then do a pattern out. You know, sky is the limit here. Okay, I'm going to put this bead kind of back on a little bit to my straw. So this is one that I did that has a little hump on either side, but because my paper was too short, it didn't really accentuate as much as I wanted it to. So I have my leftover triangles here. I'm gonna add those to the two little humps. Okay, I'm gonna add on to both sides. So I wanna show you that, how you can add on top of a bead to make it look a little bit different too. So same principle, I'm gonna take a little triangle, I'm gonna start it, and this you can glue right to the bead, right? Because it's sticking and staying on the bead. Okay, get that wrapped on. My 
fingers are a little bit sticky here. Boop. Nice line of glue and keeping that wrap nice and tight just to add um, a little bit more dimension to that hump or bump, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and you can see that that side now is a little bit bigger. It's making it a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna do the same to the other side so they're more even. What I will do too is I'm gonna um, send you guys a diagram, I'll attach it to the video, of like the different shapes of paper you can cut um, for the different like shape of bead if you're looking at doing different styles of beads. So again, I'm gonna glue it right to the end there. Add a little glue all the way out. Okay, and I'm gonna wrap it on the other side here to give it more of the illusion that I'm looking for. So a little uneven because I didn't um, measure out my triangles, but you can see, right, that there's an indent in the middle and then the beads are, or the bead has the larger outsides. You could try to trim it too if you want it to be more even. I'm trying to see how it, it's easier to show you guys. Okay, so that's one option you can do too. To make that originally, what you're gonna wanna do is keep a rectangular base <clears throat> and then um, have two triangles come out on the sides. So it kind of looks like a little pair of pants. Some skinny jeans here, okay? Rectangular base. I'll show you that with this one. So sky is the limit with these beads too. Again, that first roll is really important, okay? Then I'm gonna go down one side, down the other side. These ones are a little trickier to roll because you've got two flaps that you're kind of paying attention to and you wanna roll them evenly. Okay, so it gets a little tricky. But this is fun if you have, um, so, like someone looking for a challenge. It is definitely a little bit more challenging. Okay, and let's say we're using the orange and this lime green and the dark blue all in a like necklace or bracelet together be fun to mix some of the scraps in, right? So adding some of the lime green to the orange or the dark blue as an accent color would be really fun. I could do that too. So again, this is the one with the indent in the middle and then the outsides are a little bit wider. And again, this one is tricky just because you wanna to try to roll them evenly. I might just finish up one side and then go back and pay attention to the other side here. Okay, and try to get that triangle tip as close to the middle as you can. I'm using, using the excess glue to like glue down my little tip there. Okay, and then I'll go back to the other side. What I've seen people do, again, are like making different objects using these beads as like the decorative pieces. So again, you can see that this bead is kind of like a, an eight, right, or an hourglass shape. That's a good way to explain it. Small in the middle, bumpy on the top, okay? So I'm gonna use some of my beads here to make um, a bracelet, I think, or maybe a necklace, we'll see. I'm gonna take my embroidery thread again, just because I like the thickness of that and it'll be easier to thread. You always wanna cut off more than you think you're going to need, um, just to make it easier to thread on. And then you wanna think about pattern. So I have three orange, I have a blue and a green, so I think, and then I have some multicolored ones. So I think I'm gonna do this one orange in the middle, okay. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna do the blue on one side. Do, 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 if I can get it through. This might be another time when like the tape comes in handy to help you thread, especially if you have wide beads like mine. And again, you can be as geometrically um, precise as you want to, okay? So, <laughs> you get the idea. Oh, there's a little, I have a little guy in the way. Part of the magazine is sticking out in the middle. There we go. Then I'm gonna do two of these multicolored beads, one, two, 
there we go, and then one more orange bead. And then I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. Okay, whoopsie, oh no! Shaky, shaky hands this morning. I'm gonna do the green instead of the blue, so it's not gonna be a perfect pattern, but it'll be fun. You may wanna wash your hands after your beads have dried. <laughs> I have like really sticky fingers right now, which isn't helping. And my yarn doesn't want to go through. Okay, well you get the idea, okay? Different bead shapes, different colors. You know, um, this is really fun to make a necklace or a bracelet. You could take them, you could make it into a different shape, make it into a picture frame. Um, you could string them together and work on making them into, you can see it's kind of like a cute little bracelet here, um, making coasters or things like that. You string them and then you start moving them together, but you'd want them all the same size. Okay, so those are our two projects today. Our butterfly garland doo -doo, and our beads. Fun, easy, simple um, ingredients, if you will, or supplies that you need um, to make these. Yeah, let me know if you have any questions or comments or any suggestions for next week. Um, I look forward to seeing you then, okay? Don't forget to check out our classes for the summer. If you have questions about those, let me know. I'm more than happy to help you. All right, take care, everybody. Have a great week. Bye.